Jesus is the answer for the world today. Good morning, Pastor Esther here. This morning, we're going to begin our study of the book of 1 Peter. Um, a little background about 1 Peter that can be found in the Bible in the New Testament. Um, this is a record of Peter, the apostles' letters to dispersed Christians. Um, where were these Christians dispersed? They were dispersed out of Jerusalem and to surrounding areas. Why? Because Emperor Nero at the time had pegged Christians as enemy of the state. So they were coming under heavy persecution. And that persecution caused them to leave Jerusalem and to go to all different places um, that were surrounding Jerusalem at the time. So we have some Christians that went to what we consider as Asia Minor, other areas in what would be modern day the Middle East or um, Northern Africa. Christians began to disperse all over. And you know what's so great about when we disperse is that the gospel is also spreading. So while, yes, it was uncomfortable for the believers, um, but God had a greater purpose. And that purpose was so that as these believers went to all these different places, the gospel will be spread. So let's hear um, what Peter is sharing or admonishing and encouraging believers through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And by God's grace, I hope that as we spend some time in the book of Peter, that we will be encouraged, we will be transformed, we will be admonished, and that we will come out of this just being better followers of Jesus Christ. So it starts in 1 Peter chapter 1, and it says, um, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. So, of course, Peter is telling us that it's him who is writing. He's identifying himself. And he. the next thing he goes on to do is to tell us who he's writing to. It says, to the temporary residents dispersed in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, and set apart by the Holy Spirit for obedience and for sprinkling with the blood of Jesus Christ. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. Um, what a powerful uh, beginning salutation that the Apostle Peter writes in his letter. And I can imagine that as he is writing this, um, his first thought is to remind all these believers that are dispersed from their home. Um, you know, my uh, version of the scriptures in the Holman Christian Standard Bible, it says to the temporary residents. So, so for so many of these people, their plan was not to stay away from Jerusalem. You know, imagine being asked all of a sudden uh, to leave your hometown. Maybe Staten Island is your hometown and you come under uh, persecution and you have to get up and leave. Um, I could imagine that it was quite discouraging for so many of them. Um, at this time in Jerusalem, uh, so many believers, if we read in Acts, they had been enjoying the fellowship of one another. This community of uh, fellow individuals of the way, as they were called at that time, loving upon one another, seeing God's abundant grace and provision and experiencing the move of the Holy Spirit. And now because of persecution, all of them are dispersed. They're fragmented. It feels like what was good, what was um, normal and beautiful is broken because of this separation. And Peter encourages them to remember that one, they are chosen. He goes on to say, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. And I want to encourage us today as we continue on in our year, as we continue on in the journey of life, that we should remember that we are chosen by God. God thought about us. Um, before we were even formed in our mother's womb, I'm reminded of Jeremiah chapter one, where God says to Jeremiah that before you were formed, I knew you. And so for those of you who are joining me this morning, I want to encourage you to know that before you were a thought in the hearts and minds of your parents, God knew you. 
And he made a decision that you would be set apart, as the scripture says in First Peter verse 2, by the spirit for obedience and for sprinkling with the blood of Jesus Christ. So there's a work that has been going on in our life even before we could even conceive the idea of God and salvation. God had a plan to put us aside. And what is the purpose of God setting us apart? For obedience unto Christ Jesus. So be encouraged if you feel like following after Jesus is challenging and it's difficult. Maybe you are finding yourself in a season where you just don't know where to land. Uh, maybe the past couple of years have seemed to drag on and maybe church is not what you expected it or what you are a hope that it would be in this season but i want you to know that god has foreordained for you and i to be obedient to christ jesus um and he goes on to say for the sprinkling of the blood of jesus christ meaning that our sins um god had already purposed that we would receive god's grace and salvation and we would receive the forgiveness of our sins through the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ and I don't know about you but that really makes me excited it makes me excited to know that on this life journey that I'm in as a follower of Jesus Christ where I land at the end of it all is not in my hands but it's in the hands of God it's so encouraging to know and I encourage you to take this in to know that God is at work in your life. The places where you see your shortcomings, God sees them and he's working. The places where you feel weak and where you're like, Father, come in and help me. He's heard those prayers and he already has put a plan in place to walk you through those situations, those circumstances to cause you to grow. And as such, I ask and challenge you as I'm challenging myself that this should um, create within us more of a passion, more of a conviction. Um, it should incite with us a determination to say, I'm going to follow Jesus even more. Why? Because he truly does have us in the palm of his hands. And so Peter goes on to pray for them to say, may grace and peace be multiplied to you. So on today, February 1st, as we start a new month in 2022, that's my prayer for each and every single one of you and myself, that as we continue along on this journey that God has called us to, that his grace, meaning the power that we need to live this life, the favor that we need to interact in this world, the mercy that we need for our shortcomings, that it would be multiplied unto us and peace. God's peace that passeth all understanding that it would fall upon us. So be encouraged to know that God is at work in your life. I hope you join me next week as we continue on in the book of Peter. I am so excited for what God is going to show us in his word through his inspired words through Apostle Peter. God bless you and have a blessed week.